All right, let's get let's get to one last topic. We got Riley Bymaster chilling with us. Appreciate you filling out the tripod, buddy. Glad to have you back. Uh, I know you're a big Cedric Tillman fan, so wanted to talk a little bit uh, of Tennessee and maybe throw in some Jalen Hyatt because I don't think he's getting enough love based on the season that he had. So you know, is it is it the scheme that was running over there, and that's why these dudes were running wide open all the time, or are they are they good players? Like how how good is Cedric Tillman? Where should he be ranked? Let's let's dive into a little bit of uh, Tennessee wide receivers. There's a lot to get into when it comes to Tennessee volunteer offensive football because, yes, it's gimmicky. It is dumb and it's stupid, but it works. You can stack receivers on both sides and run bubble screens, bubble screens four times in a row, and then one guy goes deep and he's open. Every time, rinse, repeat, that's 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 how it works. But props to Heupel, great year, 110 games, A+. plus. When it comes to the receivers – Tillman battled some injuries this year, so he didn't get a full season to really show what he could do. If he does, Hyatt probably doesn't win best receiver in the nation. When it comes to projecting them to the NFL, I'm going to give both these guys comps, and I think they both fit perfectly. So I'll start with Tillman. Bigger body, more muscles. Not going to win and separate vertically consistently. That's not his game, but he's going to dominate in the middle areas of the field very Cortland Sutton ish, right? Big body runs tough after the catch breaks tackles. Uh, surprisingly good route runner can break off snap off any direction and, and create space in the middle of the field. Wide catch radius, like very prototypical X receiver. You want him on the edge. He's going to battle for the ball. going to get you yards wide receiver two in fantasy. Awesome. I think that's where Tillman projects. Hyatt is the complete and polar opposite. He's a slot guy because he can't get off press, but he can stretch deep. You'll see a lot of Will Fuller comps out there. I don't, I don't love the Fuller because Fuller was just explosive, shifty. Hyatt's much more just straight line, needs free release. He is Bernard Barian. And I can't see your face because you're battery exhausted on your what camera. A name. But I, w- I wish I could see your face when I said that. But he's he's Barian, right? Barian was a third round pick. Really up and down production. I think his best season was 800 yards and seven touchdowns, 964 and seven and 08. But touchdowns like 24 in his career over nine years. So I think that's what kind of career projection we're looking like for Hyatt. So uh, he's another scheme dependent guy. Love to see him with Chiefs, Buffalo, Philly, anybody who just spreads him out wide and runs a lot of vertical stuff. He's just not polished as a receiver. Can't get off press. You're not going to see him win before the catch other than just running deep, which is fine. That's what he does. So I'm higher on Tillman than I am Hyatt. Hyatt probably gets drafted first, but I think Tillman's more productive. So it seems like counterintuitive between what their kind of games are and how they win because it seems like the guys going over the middle, those guys are going to be your, your more slot receivers in, or big slot in today's, t- today's NFL, whereas Hyatt is a guy who's playing in the slot but is going to stretch the field. So, you know what I mean? Like your typical Z receiver is going to be more that is going to be running those shorter routes, not the guy stretching the field. How do you think that translates to the NFL? So it's it's similar to what Travis Benjamin used to do to where he wasn't you – know, he probably lined up at perimeter – you know, sometimes, but he was primarily a slot guy who just ran slot fades and the cover three beaters where he'd just run the the slot posts and he'd push vertically and he'd run out that deep safety for the perimeter guy to cut underneath and run a dig, right? So it was almost just the high low concept, but deep down the middle of the field. And I think that's what he does. Okay. So it is a little counterintuitive, which will take away from his value because he won't be on the field for 100% of their offensive packages. So he's going to be a package guy. Granted a good one. He's going to be good at what he does, but he's also going to be just in a limited number of, of you know, I, I, hate, I hate to keep saying packages, but that's, that's what he is. So he'll be good at it, but very up and down production is coming for him. He's not going to be a 1200 yard every year kind of guy. He'll have 700 yards, three touchdowns and he'll have 40 yards and seven touchdowns. It'll just flip back and forth and it'll drive you nuts. But that's what he is. Where do you see them going in the draft? Oh, 
we keep seeing Hyatt mocked in the first. That's not going to happen. Uh, I would be floored. So I won't say it's not going to happen, but I'll be floored if that happens. He he probably ends up late second, um, similar to like Nicole Hardman value. Uh, Tillman, a bit, a bit of an injury red flag just because he was hurt just with nagging stuff on and off this year. Uh, he probably similar late second, early third range, a uh, little bit less polished than Cortland Sutton was, but similar types, similar players. So they probably get drafted within 30 picks of each other. And it's just a taste thing of for the team. But I'd say if I had to put money on it right now, high at late second Tillman early third, but Tillman's going to be the better player. All right. What about uh, Hendon Hooker? See a product. What, of Hendon sex worker. We've been over this. Or is Hendon he, Hooker. Is he a legitimate player? Because you know he's a he's a quarterback. You can get as a, as a bit of a value in superflex rookie drafts right now. You yeah, know for sure. Uh, and and startups. Is is he someone you want to take a shot on, or is that more of a product of the environment? Um, he's such a tough one because I've I've seen him play every week for the last two years. And I saw him live twice this year. I got to see him in person. He is technically fine, but he misses throws that he should not miss. Wide open guys down the field, he sails them, and you're just you're he leaves you wanting more. And that's not good for a 25 year old who's been in college for seven years, right? Those They're guys called should doctors, be, <laughs> right? Doctors who are in 28th grade. Um, so, yeah, I take a shot on him because the athleticism there, the size is there. He's got the arm. He's never going to be a starter. But for, a, I mean, we've seen the quarterback landscape, guys get hurt. And then we have, you know, no names coming in, starting off the field like Brock Purdy, who's that. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely stash him if you can, because the combo of athleticism and arm and size is is great. But he just he, – I don't think he can put it all together to be a consistent starter. Should not be top three quarterback in the class, as some analysts might say. I'll take a shot there. Uh, so – I know who you're talking about, by the way. <laughs> me too. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, he's fine. Like, it, it all depends on where he's drafted. But just know that you're getting a 25-year-old with a torn ACL who's not going to play the first half of the season, not even going to be able to practice the first half of the season. So just know that this is a 2024 – investment yeah. it'll be 26 at I mean, the time we're playing dynasty and i don't really care about the 20 cl i don't care about the lost 23 nfl season and i i don't really care that he's 25 i mean quarterbacks yeah, cool, yeah. I, it doesn't it doesn't matter to me um he's not brandon whedon i don't know that he left a lot to be desired in this past year i mean it was a lot that he was getting which i guess in some you know the south carolina game and and uh well he got hurt then yeah. Um but play phenomenal against Alabama, you know. I mean, just had them as a playoff team the whole season until they, they Oh, got, so you're not taking in fact the Georgia game either? Was that was that before the South Carolina game? Yes. Yeah. He, he really played. struggled against Georgia. Yeah, who didn't? Really I mean, but like pressure wasn't good for him. Uh it was all the timing. The gimmicky offense did not work against They got boat raced against teams Georgia. with good game plans. So, and that's another thing like it, Hooker produced, yes, but at the same time, just know that that offense, I mean, Jalen Hyatt had a 1500 yard season and won the Blitnikoff, which is nuts because he was a fringe draftable guy before the year for everyone. So, I mean, give and take on both sides, but if he lands with the Saints or Tampa, like, absolutely, he's probably going to be a third round pick who you want to target just, just in case because the insurance policy is massive with with a team like that but if he lands with somebody like the chargers or somebody with an established quarterback it's not going to do much for you um are we going to sure. be having the same conversation next year with about joe milton gosh no no milton's not a good quarterback they, super fun and i, I love him so much everything i hear I keep hearing about milton he's, is he might have like if he was if he was in the nfl he might have the biggest arm in the nfl i would not argue that that he can throw a ball at 80 80 plus yards it's unreal. Why? I mean, he just don't. You just don't know where it's going. He can't layer. There's no touch. Uh, I was at the Vandy game this year, and it's the only player I've ever heard get 
audible laughs from NFL scouts watching him play because he rolls out and he tried to throw a 10 feet just toss for a first down and he threw it so hard it hit the guy's kneecaps and the guy kind of went down. Towards Hilarious. Uh, it was close, but Towards yeah, he, he, Milton doesn't have it, but he's fun. I love watching him play because it's he, he needs to go play in a Rita League or something if that was still a thing, but he, he's it's a fun back, player. It's coming back in 2024. It. First overall pick. Well, what's on his fifty yard field there? He's gonna help. He's gonna. He's he's gonna. He's gonna. He's gonna outdrive the fairway. I mean, you don't even need. <laughs> yeah, you don't even need a line at that point. Just snap it and throw it because you can get a guy in motion. I mean, it's over. Maybe 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 he'll go to Canada. That sounds like a great. He's got those big long wide fields there. He can. Oh, the he wind can wouldn't a, even matter. He can throw a sideline to sideline there. Yeah, headwind, no problem. He just zips right through it. And you didn't think you had any more shade in you. Huh? I've got shade there, but, he, <laughs> but he's fun. I love Joe. Milton. I love watching that kid play f- football. It's it's a great time. You know who doesn't love Joe Milton? Jim Harbaugh. Oh, that's true. All right. Well, I think we've uh, I think we've gotten a, gotten a lot out of our boy Riley. Really appreciate you joining us as per usual. Uh, you can find him on the Twitters at Riley Bymaster. I'm gonna get that Instagram handle too before it's over. <laughs> of course, slide into that DM. Uh, nah, but uh, can't thank you enough, man. Um, it's good to talk to someone with, with boots on the ground at the Shrine Bowl, and and you know if you if you didn't check out that episode, make sure you go hit that up. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, definitely hit that subscribe button. You're listening on the podcast, let me get a five star subby. Five star review, you know, not a whatever. You get, you know what I'm saying, okay? Uh, hey, head over to patreon.com slash the dynasty, give us a $5 holla. Hit up the Discord channel, we'll be putting extra shows out. We're mocking it up all off season long. We're talking about it on Patreon episodes. Uh, we're having patrons can come on them shows and talk to us directly. So that's, that's one of the perks. Um, Ah, I'm done. I'm done talking. It's late. I got two kids that need to go get some sleep. Ugh. Kids, man, enjoy it. My man Riley over here just dinking it up. That's that's dual income. Double income, no kids. No child. Yeah, just having a blast. Still going to bed, though. I got that early tea time. I'm dadding tomorrow, so I'm off work. I'm just playing full-time dad tomorrow. It's supposed to rain, so... Toy Story, here we come. Bluey, let's go. Nah, he's been in Toy Story. Toy Story and Boss Baby. There's like three different Boss Baby series now. I think Tim Allen tweeted out that there's going to be a fifth Toy Story coming out or something. But with Toy no Story Woody? Five. With no Woody? Did Woody die off? No, he left. In Toy, at the end of Toy Story 4, he left Bonnie. I bet he'll be back. Dude, I bet he'll be back. Interesting. I don't know. No one cares. I care. <laughs> yeah, if you got kids, you care. Yeah. <laughs> What does Jesus have to do with this? All right, that's enough. We love y'all. We'll be back. We'll be back soon. We're just pumping out content out the yin yang. I can't even edit it all. There's so much of it. All right, we love you. Peace.